So I'm going to talk about the near protozoic margin of the apertus that is preserved in the Scandinavian calidonites. <clears throat> and in the background, you already see a, a, a little picture of it. Uh, and this is, um, these are sediments that are tilted, so bedding is vertical. And you see uh, the dark rocks, these are all dikes, stacking. So I'm talking about a magma rich margin. And I understand those are uh, fossil analogs of those that have to come by. So I decided to uh, do some advertisement that those do exist in Scandinavia, in Norway and Sweden. Um, and much of the legwork has actually been uh, put in by the people listed down here, especially Hans Jürgen has uh, walked a lot of these rocks. So I'm in a uh, very comfortable position to benefit from their hard work and present you a little bit of that. If we talk about the Scandinavian calidonites, um, they are uh, in Scandinavia, obviously, <clears throat> a little bit in, uh, on Svalbard, but they're also outside the European Union, so British, uh, Ireland, Scotland, uh, on Greenland. And um, to understand the calidonites and how the margin is preserved, we need to understand uh, what we're actually looking at, so the origin. And the idea why the Scandinavian calidonites are there is it's believed that Laurentia, which is Greenland and North America, at one point collided with Baltica at about 420 million years ago. And a Himalayan-sized origin developed. Um, what we see of this origin today is basically very oversimplified basement and naps. Basement is in gray and windows are in darker gray and almost everything that is colorful are naps. Um, there's these uh, late and post scanning units. Uh, we can ignore them. We're interested in the NEPs. Why is then? Because, so this is the Atlantic margin, which reactivates structures that have been developed during the collision. So we need to look through Atlantic rifted margin, Scandian collision, which is the collision uh, Florentia and uh, Baltica, uh, to actually get to the, to the rifted margin that we want to, that we're interested in. And this part over here is basically unrifted continental crust. So everything that has been rifted was even further outboard and it's only preserved in the NEPs more or less. Um, so we need to understand how NEPs develop and the, again, oversimplified ideas, we have an upper plate or we have a lower plate with the iapetus being subducted beneath the upper plate, which is Laurentia, Baltica being pulled down. Um, and the nap stack, basically you scrape off parts of the downgoing plate, if it's on all terrains or sediments, whatever you uh, like it. The important part is that this is an in-sequence um, thrusting, younging towards the lower plate. So seven, six, and five, they are the earliest things uh, getting into the nap stack, whereas one doesn't even know what's coming. Um, uh, which also means that seven was way further outboard with respect to the lower plate than one. So the units lower in the nap stack are proximal, more proximal to the uh, continental, well, to Baltica than units that are very high in the nap stack. For Baltica, if we go back to the nap stack, um, there are many uh, tectonic units that have a at least to some degree, a, Bal uh, a Baltican uh, affinity. And there's this unit, which I just labeled seven, which has a very long uh, history of super subduction zone, magmatism, sedimentation, uh, and, and metamorphism. And just by using this very simple idea of nap stacking, we can actually unstack the nap stack and um, say, okay, Unit one, because it was low, was most proximal to Baltica. And the further we go to the uh, higher tectonic units, the further uh, away have they been from Baltica prior, before they have been incorporated into the nap stack. But we do know a little bit about these units. So we can actually make up a mock up cross section um, and, and put these units somewhere on them without really specifying how far away they are from Baltica. So again, we have our upper plate with Laurentia. We have some super subduction zone things which are going on uh, along the subduction zone here. And then we have all these units that somewhere lie either at the margin or further uh, outboard. And I'm going to talk about this cryogenic Ediacaran unit, Detonian complexes and Ediacaran Ordovician metasediment complexes, which are uh, representing the same colors on the map of, on the side here. 
first the Tonian metasedimentary complexes, which are these darker brown units over here. Um, they can be divided into two successions. Um, we don't really care about the names. Important is uh, they are really old. The age is defined by the uh, or youngest detrital zircon that has been described and the oldest intrusive into this age. So this lower unit here has been deposited at some point between 1,030 and 980 million years. There's a uh, this upper succession, uh, which has been deposited uh, between 930 and 840 million years. Um, and there's also this uh, silent igneous province, which has intruded these at 580 to 520, which is uh, becoming important in the end. Um, what is important for this unit, besides that they're really old, um, this is from a paper by Ditagasa. Uh, it comes from, this error shouldn't be there. Just look at the, uh, the, uh, this one. Um, it comes from uh, the meta sediments over there. And she, uh, well, they looked into a metamorphic event which was dated at 700 MA. And they, for us, it's important now that this is about eight kilobars. So something like uh, lower middle or lower crust. Um, if the silent igneous province is uh, up there and there are gabbros and ultramafic rocks which have been dated to about 580 ma and they have been emplaced also at about eight kilobars so between 500 uh, 700 and 580 these rocks have been at five uh, eight kilobars depths let's say lower crust um, and if you don't believe in tecton uh, elevator tectonics they have stayed there since at least 700 ma until the rifting. If you look at the uh, trigenium metasedimentary complexes, these are these yellow units over here, and there's a little bit of yellow there, which is uh, hard to see. Um, these are also uh, sandstones, metarcoses, shallow marine, there's some limestones, and this pink stuff um, are um, tillites. Um, the important thing is that all of the succession have been cut by dikes, indicated by this black line. And this is basically the picture that I showed you uh, at the beginning. Um, the trital zircons are as young as 700, uh, and it's believed that these tillites are Marinoan, uh, yeah, Marinoan age, so 635. And these dikes have been dated um, to five, uh, 608 to 596 million years before today. Um, the only intrusive in the autochton that is of similar age is uh, down here. It's about 660 million years. Um, China et al. have looked into these dikes in the geochemistry, and every one of these red dots here on this map is uh, a data point of them. In light gray, you see uh, the naps indicated, while basement in white. And what they basically find is that the mantle was elevated in temperature during emplacement of these rocks, and they find a mantle plume signature associated with this. And then they speculate about the um, central Iapetus magmatic province, uh, on which has been um, intruding Baltica and Laurentia, and at this time this is called Rodinia, um, at about 608 million years. And this may have aided continental breakup, and this is traditionally believed to be the time of or just preceding the continental breakup. Hans Jürgen has looked into uh, these dikes even further, and he uh, found that um, the emplacement depth of these dikes is about two and a half to four and a half kilobars. So, middle crust, half of that, what we looked at at the uh, rocks before. Um, and this is Will become important later again. So if we now look at the the, the Edia Karen Ordovician meta sediments, this light gray unit over here, these they have this thick siliciclastic successions. They also have tillites and they go into finer grained meta sediments in shales in the end. And we have the Cambrian Edia Karen boundary uh, preserved in these rocks. Um, the trital zircons in these units indicate that they are younger than 635 million years, these sediments. There is a lava flow up here, which is very interesting. And um, there is the, the current boundary, which is 540 million years. And the only the magmatic events on Baltica we essentially know between 
the cryogenian uh, 635 and uh, the ATK boundary is the Scandinavian dike complex, the silent igneous province, Eggers and dikes from there's actually the Fien carbonate complex somewhere there, which is also 580 million years. So this lava flow, the most sensible thing is to say it's correlated with this magmatic event. So I put it 608, 596 MA, um, which means that this Tillites are younger than that. So they're not the same tillites as in the cryogenian sessions before. Um, if we take this information and just put them on, a, on the x-axis here as depths converted uh, from, from kilobars by three and a half, 3.7 kilobars per kilometer. So we know that the current successions at time of magmatism, that's the lava flow correlated. Uh, was at the surface. The cryogenian successions at the same time have been at about mid-crustal levels. And the Tonian successions at about the same time have been at lower crustal levels. And we know the thrusting, that these thrust over Tonian sediments uh, complexes and those have been thrust over these ones. So we can make up again a mock-up cross-section of the margin that may have looked like something like that, could have been looked different. But what we can do now is we put these NEP complexes on this cross-section. So the Ediacaran succession were at the surface at this time, and they're about six, eight kilometer thick. The cryogenian successions, highly diked, um, higher in the highest and abstracts so of further outboard and at mid cross the levels. And the high diking may indicate maybe there have been something below uh, something like a, a seaward dipping reflector. And then again, we have the cryogenian uh, Tonian units. <clears throat> they have been, they're way older. They have been down in the, in the lower crust. So that for terms of rifting at six or eight, they behave like base, uh, basement. And um, the only thing that then is, uh, necessary to think again, we thrust again everything in sequence, put these units on top of these and these, and we're basically back where we started. And with this, uh, probably way too late now because of the difficulties, I will leave you with this uh, mock-up reconstruction of the margin. Thank you. Thanks, Johannes. Uh, you actually would have a few more minutes left, but uh... That's, that's fine, I guess. <laughs> Thanks for, for pulling this through despite these difficulties. And you were really well to understand uh, throughout the time. Okay, so don't use the built-in microphone. Remember that. <laughs> yes, <laughs> we will. Anybody uh, has a question for Johannes? People were discussing heavily still about Thibaut's talk. Uh, I hope I didn't, <laughs> I, I hope I didn't uh, some of these some of a question to you slipped my attention. So if someone has a question for Johannes, you can just unmute and ask it uh, straight away without typing. I would have a question. Um, where is the rest of the volcanic margin? The SDRs and the underlying uh, underplates? That's a very good question. And um, we don't really know. Um, these rocks have been let's say understudied, uh, although they are actually quite one of the units that have been studied the most, but um, we haven't found um, this lower lower part, for example, lower crustal body, if you want to order un or under plating, maybe they're subducted because they were too heavy and they didn't make it into the nap stack. It seems that the naps get detached from the low down going plate at the mid crustal level um, at the time of thrusting, that is not uh, where they have been uh, doing rifting and the upper part yeah it ha they have no seaward dipping reflectors for example have been um, described so i don't know okay thank you and with that i'd like to close today's session a bit tumultuous but uh, very interesting nevertheless